Hi, hello and welcome to another edition of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today, we're going to be talking about five things that are just different here in China. So, don't go anywhere and roll that intro. Be a real bad boy. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. So here are the five things that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about PDA, physical displays of affection. We're going to be talking about toilets. We're going to talk about eating and, well, anything that entails eating. We're going to talk about traffic and we're also going to be talking about beaches. So let's start talking about PDA. Well, the first thing that I have to say about PDA is that some of the weirdest things that happen here is that boys are always touching boys. It's so weird. You walk into a classroom and you have kids that are always touching each other. They're holding hands or they're putting their hands on the leg or they're hugging each other constantly. And these are not kids that are necessarily gay, nothing wrong with that. But it's just that I don't believe that they're gay because there are many. So that would basically mean that they're all gay. It's, it's just the way that it is. And it's a little bit disturbing, a little bit strange to, to, to experience it because we don't do that back home. Um, we have this macho society where men don't touch each other unless uh, very specific situations like when you're celebrating a goal from your team or something like that. Other than that, no. The weird thing with that is that you rarely see boys doing the same with girls. It's just boys and boys and girls and girls. It's, it's, it's strange. I had my first experience when I was just landed in China and I got my first job. I was introduced to the staff at the school that I was going to work at. And I fir first I met all the men and I shook hands with them. And when I got to the first girl, the first female teacher, I shook hands with her and I leaned in for the kiss and she just pulled back. And then I pulled her back in like, hey, and just trying to say hello. She pulled back and this happened like two, three times. And then in the end, I was like, I don't know what was happening. So I just let go of her and I decided to just wave at the rest of the female teachers that were waiting to be introduced to me um, that day. So that taught me a lesson about PDA very, very quickly, not kissing people at all. So for a Latino, that's quite, quite different. So this, this absence of contact between men and women, uh, it's also interesting to me because I, I ask my students sometimes like, hey, do your parents, do you ever see your parents kissing? Do you ever see your parents like hugging or, or being amorous to each other? And 99% of the students will tell me, no, they have never seen their parents uh, expressing their affection physically. And that's weird because they are one of the largest populations in the world. So something is happening, but it's just not in front of people. And perhaps the last thing that I'm going to say about physical displays of affection, uh, not really affection, but in terms of meeting people, the Chinese handshake. The Chinese handshake is extremely different. You know, you have your Western handshake when you go like one, two, three, and you let go. Well, in China, it's very, very different. And what happens is that you go with your Western handshake and you go one, two, three, but then you realize that they're not letting go. So that, that tension that you go in and then you release a little bit your hand, but they haven't let go. So you end up having your hand like, like a dead fish handing, hanging right there on, in their hand until they're finished talking or somebody's finished doing the translation. So it turns into a five minute handshake. It, it's just weird and so, so, so uncomfortable. So when you're shaking hands with a Chinese person, just bear in mind that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be longer than usual, much longer. So, on to the next topic, toilets. Now, we all know that China uses uh, squatters, right? The, the little hole in the ground. That's not what I'm going to be talking about. But some of the things that I see, for example, in male toilets is when you step up to the urinal, there's, there's always pee on the floor. Like, like they're either too short for the urinal, and I'm talking in height, <laughs> or, or I don't know what it is. Or there's just, there's a jet of stream of pee that comes out and splashes all over. Why is it always pee on the floor when you step up to a urinal? I don't get it. I don't understand it. Well, women, you don't know. But men, if you step into a male toilet in China, you know what I'm talking about. There's always pee there. How come? <laughs> and, and this leads me to problem number two. Stink. It always stinks in a public toilet or in, in a nice restaurant or wherever you're going. It's always stinky, except in a five-star hotel. 
Why? Why is it always smelly? Why does it smell so bad? But the weird thing is that you step into Hong Kong, for example, and they also have these Chinese squatters, but no, it doesn't smell at all. It's clean. It's, 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 it's comfortable to, to, to go into a toilet in, in Hong Kong. But in China, Jesus Christ, you sometimes have to go in like this. Okay, another weird thing about toilets, there is literally never any toilet paper. You have to bring your own. So if you're a first timer in China, never go to a bathroom without toilet paper because there is none. So if you're doing your business and you look around afterwards, you're going to be in trouble on the weird time. <laughs> and perhaps one of the weirdest things that I've seen is in certain schools where I teach, and this is also common in, in some rural areas, there are public toilets where there's no door. It's just like a little J tall wall with no door so that you don't see each other but anyway you see each other so they're doing their business and you're walking like hey 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 everybody's just saying hello to each other you can see each other faces reading the newspaper having a cigarette it's just 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 weird you don't want to see that that's just different now on to eating now here's the thing whenever you are invited to eat the person who invites you is going to pay so Bear in mind, there's no sharing, there's no AA, unless it, this is pre-agreed. So if somebody tells, hey, let's have some dinner, they're paying. And if you, for any chance, invite somebody by mistake, ye, you're going to be having to pay for the bill. eh? But now, some table manners that are just extremely strange. I'm saying not everybody, but a lot of people, most people, they talk while they're eating. So they they having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I went mm, that over there. Mm -hmm. I had a very weird situation when I was in Harbin. My boss at the time took me out for dinner and we were we were eating and he was having rice and he was talking and I was wearing glasses at the time. And as he talked, <laughs> one piece of rice just flew across the table, yeah, boom, straight into my glass and it stuck into my glass. And I was there like <laughs> looking at the thing and to him it was absolutely nothing. And I'm like, what do I do now? What do I do now? And, and the friends that would be with me, they were just cracking up, but it was just way too funny. But yeah, they talk while they eat. Another thing that they do is there's, there's this, I don't know why, some people have told me that this is kind of like a way to express um, how good the food is, but they make noise when they, when they chew. They're like, and they eat making this noise. All I can think of is, my mom would kill them. If I were to do that at the table, my mom would slap my face and leave my head spinning for three days because it's just such terrible manners back in the West. But here in China, apparently that's the way you compliment the cooking. Well, another thing that's important to know is that when you go to a restaurant, you don't have to tip. Uh, you don't have to give any, any service fee or anything. But there's something called the magic teapot. They'll bring a teapot and uh, a certain number of tea uh, teacups for everybody that's at the table. But you're going to have to pay a fee for each person drinking from that teapot. So if you're three people, they're going to charge you two yuan per person. That's going to be six yuan in total. But then a friend joins you. They bring another cup. That teapot now magically turned into an eight RMB teacup. Let's say three more people, boom, it all of a sudden became a 20 RMB teacup. So it is magical. The same content all of a sudden is worth more money. Uh, but you don't tip here. And perhaps one of those things that would make my mom really, really go nuts is the fact that they spit their bones out onto the table. So if they're eating chicken, for example, if they're eating fish and there's, there's fish bones or chicken bones in your mouth, they just go like on the side of the table right there. It's just it's just so strange. And the weirdest thing is that after so many years in here, I found myself doing it from time to time. And I'm like, <laughs> good thing my mom is not here to see this. Okay, now on to traffic. The best way to summarize what traffic is like here in China is there is no sense of right of way. They just don't understand it. They don't, they don't, they don't, or they learn it, but they don't give about it. They don't care about it at all. There is no right of way they they might learn it but they don't really follow it they don't care about it nobody just is concerned about giving way everybody just does their own thing another thing that's different is that there is 
such level of inconsideration when you are out on the road. People will park wherever they want because that's what they want. Though if there's no parking space, well, they'll double park and they'll block you uh, from from uh, leaving the place because they just needed to go in and out and they park right behind you and you can't leave because they're parked behind you. The level of inconsideration is tremendous and it's and it's connected to how good your car is or what is your 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 self-worth oh i'm an important person i can do this it doesn't matter it's incredible so because of all these power power struggles that that they have um we have to talk about what is called a chinese standoff when you have um you come to a place where somebody has to yield way to another it really depends on what kind of car you drive if i have a better car than you you yield uh, i'll go no 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 i got here first you yield and they create humongous traffic jams because because of the Chinese standoff. Yeah, I should go first because I have a better car than you. It's just insane. And other things is just different and, and really, really strange. Okay, I'll tell you the story. Um, around 2009, they passed a regulation in which they were going to um, impose fines if you were not wearing your seatbelt. Yes, I know, 2009, but that's true. Um, but at the same time, there was a huge campaign on TV and newspapers and everywhere about wear your seatbelt and don't use the cell phone when you're driving. They were both launch at the same time and promoted probably with the same intensity and the same uh, amount uh, of budget for the campaign. What you see is immediately everybody started using the seatbelts, but even today you see people talking on the phone. The weirdest thing is why did they embrace one of these policies and the other just they don't care about it. It's just strange. It was launched at the same time with the same intensity and the same purpose, but they listen to one, they don't listen to the other. And the last thing I want to talk about is the whole idea in China that rules are for idiots. It's just, it's just insane. It drives me crazy. But if there's a traffic jam, for example, on the highway, you will see just lines of cars driving on the shoulder, vroom, going really, really fast past everybody that's stuck in the traffic jam. And, and they think they're smarter than everybody else. I look at all these idiots. <laughs> I'm getting out of this traffic jam before them. It's it's so strange that that's how they think. Rules are for idiots. Okay, the last thing that I want to talk about today is beaches. So, most of the the most famous beaches are usually private. That means that you have to pay to go in. Um, there are very very few public beaches, but uh, yeah, uh, you you gotta get used to it. Most of these beaches, even though they're private and you have to pay, they're absolutely crowded. There's just thousands of people going down to the beach on a on a holiday um in summer it's just thousands of people you can barely walk it's it's crazy but the biggest thing and the weirdest thing is that most chinese people are not very confident in the water so what you see <laughs> in the sea is is thousands of 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 you know those rubber rings those floaty things because they don't know how to swim so they literally look like dumplings uh, swimming and floating on a soup it's just just a sea of floaters is 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 hilarious at the same time in this sea of floaters how are you going to see when somebody is drowning so Hence the lifeguard. The job of the lifeguard is the easiest one in the world. I have never actually seen any lifeguard take any action in China. They just have their suit and they sit there, look at their phone, but I wouldn't trust them to rescue me. So good thing that I'm a good swimmer. And another thing that's weird about beaches is that you go to the beach and you, and you see people that are fully clothed enjoying the beach. They're walking around in their, you know, the, the nice trousers and the button shirt, sometimes with a tie. Um, they'll go a little bit casual, so they take off their shoes and socks and they walk with them in their hands and they roll up their pants so they can get their feet wet. But that's what they're going to be wearing on Monday to go to the office. It, it, there's there's no concept of beach wear uh, for most people. Um, if they're ladies, they're always covered because they're afraid of the sun or they're walking around with a little umbrella. That's just so strange. You go to the beach, but you're afraid of the sun. So you cover yourself in clothes because you don't want to, you don't want to get dark. Go figure. And last but not least, the Chinese bikini. The Chinese bikini is just the most ridiculous thing. 
picture a bikini from the 1950s, you know, with little flowers and, and covering up, up on the belly button. If it's if it's a two piece, if it's a one piece is most likely the most horrendous colors. It's just very, very strange. Hardly ever do you see a bikini in China. So, yeah, that's also pretty, pretty different. Okay, guys, that's the end of this video. Those are the five things that are just different here in China. So make sure to like this video and click the button down there to subscribe. You'll be notified whenever I put a new video um, every week, okay? So until the next one, stay safe.